What's up, friends? Welcome to another book review. Today, I'm I am reviewing the book "What They Still Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School" by Mark McCormick. Now, um, this is an add-on to the original book. What they don't, not the still, what they don't teach you at Harvard Business School. Um, and if you haven't guessed, this is a very business-oriented book. Um, that is Mark's background. So a little background on Mark. He is a upper level executive. He's really high in his business and he um, manages and works with a lot of sports stars. So he worked with Arnold Palmer, uh, Jack Nicholas, um, golf, tennis, a bunch of other people. And he worked with an agency that managed those people and helped them work with advertisers. So that's kind of his business background. Um, so let's go into the structure of this book. So this book is set up in by varying topics, and as you can guess, since it is a business-based book, there are very business-heavy topics such as you know selling, negotiating, um, getting ahead, entrepreneurship. Um, let me see if I can find specifics. Getting organized, communicating, managing topics such as that that you would normally think about when thinking about a uh, heavy business bias. So. This book is going to be beneficial. Well, before I get into the benefits, let me talk about his style of writing, which I think is very clear. Um, so when I first started reading this book, I felt like he was very rigid, and it was, I don't know, a very stereotypical business type, where, you know, it's like, this is how it is, and that's because I know. And after a while, you kind of fall into this uh, comfortable nature how you're kind of talking to Don Draper so if you don't know who Don Draper is um, he's a character portrayed by Matt Heim I don't know how to say his last name with an H um, but he's the lead character on Mad Men and he has a swagger about him like he knows his way around the conference room um, so he kind of has that map so Mark McCormick kind of has that swagger when he's writing this book He's not fresh off the boat, you know, when it comes to business. He understands what he's talking about. He's been doing it for years. He's worked his way up. He's worked around exec er, um, high-performing executives. He's observed, taking notes. This is his second book, so he obviously has enough to fill two books, so he knows what he's talking about. But uh, he's not Don so Don, Don Draper-ish, that or Don Draper-esque, that... He's, you know, talking about infidelity and, and talking about being a misogynist and chauvinist and all that stuff. So take all the negatives, take all the old school um, negatives behind Don Draper's style and just focus on his swagger in the business and the conference room. And that's really what you're getting in this book. That's the type of style you're going to be reading, in my opinion. Um, so now let's jump to the benefits of reading this book. So if you are in a business field, accounting, marketing, advertising, anything like that, this is going to benefit you. Like, without a doubt, this book is going to be great. Um, I mean, I haven't personally been in a business setup, but I feel like a lot of the stuff, it isn't, it, it's timeless information. You know, how to write a short memo, how to communicate, how to end disputes between your executives and your junior executives, how to treat people differently, how to determine whether or not your company is run by the staff or if it's run by the executives. He makes that uh, distinction, it's very important. Now, if you're not in a business profession, don't fret. There's still a lot of important things you can get and learn from Mr. McCormick. Um, so, if you haven't figured it out yet, life is basically a giant business transaction every now and then. Um, at one point, you're gonna have to buy a car. You're probably gonna have to negotiate the price. That's a business transaction. Um, if you're gonna convince somebody of something, say, bring someone to your ide ideology or way of thinking, that's gonna be kind of like a business transaction. You're trying to get some someone to do something that initially they don't want to do. If you're asking for help, consider it a business transaction because you're trading your time, you're trading their time. It may not be monetary, but it could still be considered business. So, a lot of the topics that he covers in here is very transferable across all fields. So one of the things he talks about is brainstorming, you know, the four steps, forming, storming, norming, and performing. 
So you're gonna form, you're gonna get your group together, you're gonna storm, you're gonna throw ideas all around, you're gonna norm, you're gonna figure, okay, we all like this idea after we've stormed, this is the best we've got, and this is all across the board what we decide to do, and then you're gonna perform, you're gonna go ahead with that idea that you've all settled on. Um, that's one of the topics. One of the ideas he talks about in this book that I think is transferable to business or whatever profession you're in is the four types of people you're going to work with within an organization. So he defines them as champions, plotters, dabblers, and maniacs. So let me describe what those are. Uh, the champions are the people that he uses graphs, so I'll try to do it, show it for you. Um, champions are people that, you know, improve their performance, they drop a little, but improve their performance and drop, you know, gain more technique, fail once, fail or fail a couple times, gain and gain. But they're on a current upslope and they have minor setbacks every now and then. They learn from and they grow. So those are your champions. This is like the stereotypical champion, champion mindset, you know, you fail, but you pick yourself up by the bootstraps and you keep on going. Um, and then next, he talks about plotters. What plotters are, are they're kind of consistent, they just keep on, they're not really going up or down, they're just very consistent. And he says these are the people you're going to want in positions where uh, it might not be the most exciting, it might not have the most influence, but it needs to get done. Um, I'm sure you've heard the term ditch diggers, you know, these are people that just like do what needs to get done, the oil behind the group, uh, make sure it runs cleanly, you couldn't do it without them. You need those people in your organization. The third people he talks about are dabblers. Now, as you can probably guess, dabbling is, you know, we're going to put your toe in this idea and we're going to jump out and put our toe in that idea and then we're going to jump out. Um, we probably did this as kids, you know, we're playing t-ball and uh, I'm going to play t-ball for three months. I don't like t-ball anymore. I'm going to play soccer. Oh, I love soccer. I'm going to play for two months. I don't like soccer anymore. You know, you dabble in things and then you get out. So you're never really in something long term. Um, and then the fifth, or, whoa, five, no, the fourth person he talks about are maniacs. And the maniacs are like dabblers on steroids. They're so up and down that they're really inconsistent. They're hard to work with, they're hard to control. Um, and he says, really be wary of maniacs. Um, I'm sure uh, if you're a maniac, you probably aren't too solid uh, career wise. You might need, if you identify as a maniac, you might want to sit down and really reconcile what you want to fix and what you work on, want to work on, but uh, I'm not going to go into the whole therapy what you should be doing, because I'm talking about this book, and that's the focus. So, a little bit longer of a review, but I hope this has helped, and uh, I would highly recommend this book to anybody, whether you're a business, you're in the business profession, or whether you're in any other organization, any other profession. If you're a student, you've got to work with people. Uh, working with people is key to business, and business is key to working with people. So, I hope this review has helped you, um, give it a read, uh, if you know someone that's getting ready to read this book, send this review their way, um, but yeah, keep reading, keep learning, keep focusing, and keep on trying to know more than you did yesterday. Uh, this is me, signing off.